Mushy mushy, Ziki son. Uh, como se dice podcast in French? <laughs> Le podcast. <laughs> pretty sure that's yeah, it. I'm pretty sure that's it. All right, I think are... it has to be. It's got to be. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm just, I mean, I'm just, I'm not pushing up daisies. I wish. Well, I, I guess. Well, see, so I think that the best case scenario for either of us when it comes time for us to push up daisies mm-hmm. is to actually have a tombstone that's an arm coming out of the ground. Maybe holding a flower pot. That'd be pretty. Is it actually our arm yeah. or is it just like a, you know, like a statue w- arm? I think I think it'd have to be a statue arm as much as I'd like it to be our arm. Mm-hmm. Either one of them. Um or you know we could we could have like plots somewhere near each other and we could do like that 80s slow motion high five I'm just not quite there <laughs> beautiful I, i'm in for the uh, <laughs> the death high five <clears throat> yeah and i mean just just almost nailing it almost nailing it it's a good good phrase for our lives anyway <laughs> almost dead almost dead <laughs> Missed it by that much. By that much. Well, <laughs> anything exciting happened in your life this week, sir? No, I I flew all over the country and made yeah. it back just in time to be recording this with you. Thank you. You're such a sweet fellow. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, sweet and sour. Sweet That's and what sour. they call us. Sweet and sour. Cool. <clears throat> well, no, I've got some exciting I, uh, news. Oh, what what is it? Uh, I installed a bidet on our toilet. So, I was I, I was under the impression that that was an, a completely separate contraption. Like you moved from one to the other. Move. From so one how do to you install? Other. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I, I think in some cases that is, but now, you know, it's 2017. You can do anything you want to do. You want to put a bidet on your already just on your toilet? You can do it, and I did it. So is it just like a super soaker down there? Mm, yeah, actually, it's yeah, it's just a, a guy I've got. He's in the toilet and he just, <laughs> I'm ready. And then he's, you know, you hear the gets him getting the pressure up, and then he squirts in your butthole. Is that what that sound is? <laughs> right. Yeah. I, so in the, in yep. my in my mind right now, I'm picturing whatever that super soaker monster was, where you had the backpack full of water and then you just like pumped it. So. I don't remember what the model number was that was for that super soaker, but you have that pod behind the toilet, and then you have the 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 cannon pointing up through, mm-hmm. uh, and then and then you just do your number number two, and then you hit the number three button, and there you go. That's I mean it's is that not what you did? It's pretty similar, I think, as the super soaker. I'm gonna say one thousand. That seems like a thousand. It seems like a thousand. Yeah, I think that's right. Actually, um. That's you, you nailed it. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, you so, <clears throat> do you also have the squatty potty? No squatty potty, just the bidet. Hmm. How do you spell it? B right. comma D A Y. You know, I have no idea. B B A. My my grandma had one when she lived in Texas, and as a kid, <laughs> I was just I think I was five when I when I saw the last one. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was a toilet, so I went and used that <laughs> toilet appropriately. And she did not care for that. No, I suppose. Number one or number two? <laughs> oh, I, I pulled a number two. <laughs> yeah. Nicely done, yeah. sir. Yeah. You know, I, I had work to do. Yeah, you got it done. Wood to shop, chop, so to say. Yeah. <laughs> well, for anyone that's interested, and I'm sure they are, uh, it's like a little, I don't know, it's a <clears throat> rectangle. And it goes in between the uh, the bowl of the toilet and the seat, and it's got a little spout underneath. And uh, you ha- you hook it to your water supply, and and that's it. And then uh, if you're thirsty while you're going number two, you can just kind of scoot back a little bit and squirt up, and it's a pretty powerful jet. So you can just take a little sip there, like a water fountain yeah, from hell. Yep, exactly. And then when you're done, just scoot forward again and splash your butt out. And- you, sir, are going to be single-handedly responsible for bringing Montezuma's revenge to America. I, I'd, be, I'd consider that a great honor. <laughs> it's. Uh, I look forward to updates on this on 
<laughs> I, how it's going to ride going I'll, forward. I'll keep you. But I, I've got a Twitter account again. It's a new one. I'll, I'll you know, I'll keep you. Hashtag or however <laughs> that works. Awesome. Please do. We'll do. Uh, uh, so you're gonna you got hashtags for you for me for the podcast two two boys one podcast in a bidet. I think that that going <laughs> forward on Twitter is going to become something. <laughs> yeah. What what could possibly go trending after that? I don't I don't know. I think that might be the end of Twitter. <laughs> I think you're onto something. Literally, on you're on the toilet seat of something. You're on the cusp of something great. I'm ready to just give an enema to Twitter, man. <clears throat> <laughs> Awesome, and this is something that you installed yourself. Oh yeah, you know I'm a big, you know, strong and and smart man. So I just, I mean, it took me quite a long time, longer than it probably should have, but I did it. And, wow. And I, I mean, the last thing that I did by myself was I picked up a Little Caesars. Oh, what? Uh, hot and ready. Hot and ready. Was it hot? Was it ready? It was both. Yeah, uh, and I made it less so. In a thirty-minute drive after I bought it, sure. so that was on me. You could have eaten it on the way. I did. I, I, oh, I put okay. up a couple slices. Those two are hotter and readier than the rest of them. But still, is that, is that a fact? Huh. Uh, I like to think that Little Caesars was created by Remus of Rome yeah. fame. What's so the, the the vanquished brother who did not get to build the second greatest empire in the world went and started a pizza chain. You're like, well, fuck you, Romulus and Remus, right? Yep. <clears throat> fuck yep. you, Romulus. I'm gonna. Do you think he invented the pizza then too, or did he just? I believe that he invented it, and he's getting the last laugh from the grave because Rome's not still standing. You know, I mean, it is, but, but it Rome. isn't. Not their Rome. But Little Caesar is still alive and kicking. It's true. Not my Rome. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my pizza. <laughs> that is my pizza. <clears throat> Romulus got it in the end, man. He did. He, he, it took him, you know, several hundred years, but uh, I think he, he crushed it. What, what, 2,050 years or something? I don't know. I, no, it would have been closer to 3,000. Yeah, right. I think that's, <clears throat> you know. I don't know. History. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, my grasp on hitch- history and pizza creation is a little lax, Look, but I, I I believe that in 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 this in this society where uh, opinions are truths, mm-hmm. I think that I nailed it. I'd just like to add that and tell everyone: we know the most about pizza. We know the most about Rome. We, we everybody says so. We're the best at it. We're great at it. Believe, believe us. And if we you know. don't, if you don't believe us, then just quit listening to this podcast because you're not going to enjoy what we have to say. That's right. But you really, s- don't stop listening because <laughs> odds are you represent a very high percentage of our listening audience. <clears throat> That's true. So you do hold a lot of uh, a lot of weight. I mean, if you don't like the way we talk, I guess you could say, you know, I'm one third of your. You audience. could reach out to five five five. Screw you. On the on the corner of Afton, yep, uh, Wyoming. Come on, but up. that's where your that's where your uh, your thoughts and opinions should go and stay. Not online; they don't live online. Don't track me down. Don't don't track Rob's bidet down. You're not welcome to use it any time that you wish. That's there are right. rules; they're just few and far between. If you and if you come to my house, I will let you have a drink of water, but it's out of the bidet because. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's only appropriate that you would get to experience things that we've talked about on the show firsthand. <laughs> Consider yourself lucky. Living part- I'm sure that they will. I yeah, I would just If I was a listener and I got to drink from my bidet, I would be just tickled pink. Are you also going to make salad in your bidet? <laughs> of course. I'm I mm. uh, with the addition of the bidet, I mean, I'm able to number 2 First and foremost, uh, what's after first and foremost? Second and second most, I guess, huh? Yeah, I'd say okay. I'd say a second and then a close second. Second and a close second. I got my water. Almost a tie. Almost a tie. I got my water source. It's like a little. You dug a essentially a well within your own home. Mm-hmm. 
And then I'm all of these things. So for those of you who aren't aware, Rob and I are about 600 miles apart recording these. And these things, the next time I drive out to see you, will be what I think about. So when I sit down at your table again, all of these conversations are going to be spinning through my mind. There, we have no uh, little Caesars here, but I will have a hot. I'm gonna bring uh, my own a hot and ready pizza for you, I freshly Great. made in my my toilet while I was sitting on my toilet <laughs> slash bidet. Everything was was rinsed freshly in the bidet. <laughs> It was. I keep I keep waiting for the poop weight loss plan to catch on as a fad. Like, uh, just, just like I'll, I'll bring this around full circle in a little bit. Where yeah, I mean, you just eat a lot mm-hmm. and then you lose four pounds. I feel like that's a significant value. And then you you don't hear people talking about mm-hmm. that at at uh, at tables at lunch tables or dinner tables when they're bragging about what diet that they're on. But I'm trying to bring that into, you know, breathe some life into that. Because I hate those conversations. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to start reminding people that I do, in fact, poop to lose weight. Well, next time you, if you know somebody that frequently is talking about that, just hold your number two. And then once they start talking about that, say, please excuse me. You know, go let off a massive deuce. Come back and say, hey, I just lost four pounds. See, I'm going to... I'm going to stop you right there and counter with why leave the table at all? <laughs> why not just, why not go with a dirty, rotten scoundrels, Rupert, Steve Martin moment mm-hmm. and be like, uh, may I be excused to use the bathroom? <sighs> <laughs> Thank you. I just lost four and pounds. I just lost four pounds, baby. Uh, because what, what, what I am, you know, in full circle encompassing here in my figure eight moment is uh, they they had a moment like that in Lost in Translation where they're talking about the diet. Um, oh yeah, and they how did, she they? she's she's not anorexic, but her father, who fought for, <laughs> on <laughs> on the Cuban side of the Bay of Pigs, in is indeed anorexic in Cuba. Well, speaking of which, it sounds like it's time for Zeke Week. Zeke, Zeke! Week. <laughs> Ah, here we are. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. It's everyone's favorite segment, Zeke Week. <clears throat> is it Zeke? Is Zeke here? I, I am uh, present and accounted for, All right, and I'm 0 for 1. 0 for 1. That's okay. All right, I guess I guess you're uh, This week we're talking about Lost in Translation. Zeke, thoughts? First of all, I would like to thank Dan for not being a friend of the show. <laughs> uh... <laughs> And somehow I'm going to get him back. I hope you're listening, Dan. And if you're not, <clears throat> then next time I see you, I'm just going to hit play on the podcast so you have to listen rather than hang out with me. A little backstory so, for everyone. Uh, on this segment, uh, Zeke and I alternate. Uh, I'm Rob, by the way, in case you forgot. <clears throat> alternate movies to watch, and then we'll talk about them the next week. Uh, this week I picked uh, Lost in Translation for Zeke to watch. Uh, and the primary reason for that is because... Zeke and a friend of ours, Dan, from back home, have a long-standing grudge where Zeke has not seen Lost in Translation, Dan has not seen Shawshank Redemption, and neither one would budge on it, so I finally, thinking Dan would be so excited. So you chose sides, is what you did. I I, I see where I stand. Look, I would have done done it to Dan. Yeah, continue. Yeah, the story behind the the grudge was that I, I... uh, obviously, uh, if you think of famous film families, my name is in that mix. Uh, but when I watched uh, Godfather Part 3, I was not impressed, and so then refused <laughs> to watch anything that Sophia was involved in going forward, which I understand is absurd. I do. I understand that, but I did make it 14 years. So as for the movie... Uh, <clears throat> I I did I I I, enjoy, I did enjoy it. Uh, it 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 was very well written and very well directed. And Sophia did both of those things. And I think she pulled a Robert Redford, Brad Pitt moment where she, it uh, the way that Scarlett Johansson acted and looked, reminded me a lot of how Sophia had acted before. Not to say that she, like I hated everything about it. It just like their their mannerisms reminded me of each other. And it was a great film for Bill Murray to be involved with. 
but I, I was shocked that it was 14 years ago that that came out. Yeah, when, yeah, we were talking about that last night a little bit. Yeah, that that is surprising. I mean, Cripes, do you know the year? 2002, was it? Uh, it came out 2004, Four. but they were filming it. No, end of 2003, I think. It, uh, yeah, end of 2003, which is the year that we graduated. Yeah. So it has been since high school that we've had this feud going on. And I finally forced forced uh, forced you guys out of the stalemate. What else do I have now, Rob? You've taken it all from me. Yeah, well, deal with it. <laughs> what are you going to do? I did uh I did look up a little bit of trivia about it yeah, and um I there are I didn't realize that there were huge message boards about what that last thing that he whispered in her ear before he kissed her was. Oh, what's uh, what's the consensus or? So it it seems like the the phrase most likely mentioned was <clears throat> promise me that after I leave you'll go up to the room and tell him. Hmm. What ha- tell him what happened? I think something like that. Um, and from what I gather, this is based on Sophia's own experiences when she was married to Spike Jones. I think is what hmm. what was going on in the background. But it, it is it is interesting because she grew up in such a film prominent family. I've been in discussions where she, she's bored on both sides of that because it is easy when you're talking about something that you know about to just get caught up in and only talk about that one thing. I have very few conversations that I can hold other outside of film. Um, but she would have been able to hold those conversations, so I think that that was an exaggeration. Sure. Uh, and it wasn't a great light on filmmakers, which I'm, I'm also surprised about because they're like every filmmaker in that was jaded or an asshole. You're talking about like so. photographers and... Such the photographers, yeah, yeah, and then and then also Bill Murray's character who was just jaded about the whole thing. Well, you know, and she was she yeah. was like the only one that wasn't involved in some specific aspect of uh, of creating at that moment. She did write, she did paint, and all that thing, but she was not participating in it in that in in the the week or or so that we got to peek into that film. So it was interesting. My only question about what he whispered in the common consensus on the message boards is what's the uh, Scarlet's husband wasn't even back yet, was he? He was still out in Takefnawa or wherever, wasn't he? Yes, as far as I understand. So I, I don't think it was something that I don't I didn't take it as something that had to happen. Like he was wait, up in the room waiting for I, her. I um, but said. it was something that like, yeah, it, it is. But like waiting like to go up after he leaves and wait, wait and tell her husband, like, don't leave Japan without telling her husband how she I was feeling. Understood. <laughs> this will happen. So but that's I have no idea. And I think that's that's why it was done that way. It was open for interpretation. It actually yeah, reminded me and I know that it happened first, but it reminded me a lot of like crazy. Oh, sure. Where it was just like a lot of open interpretation, but relation complicated relationships. Um and it, I, I I assume that that it had something to do with that. It was it was nice to see uh, the amount of recognition that it got back in 2014 at the Oscars. Um, yeah, it was up for best. But I, I, I it was up for best picture. Yeah, that's a... uh, but it was. Uh, I wish they would have shot it digitally rather than on film. But that's just me. Why is that? I think it would have. I think it would have held up a little bit better visually. Like I, I like the look of film, but um, one of the things that digital just helps so much with is light capacity. Oh, and sure. not that it wasn't well lit, but I think if they at the time digital cam, I'm not sure what the digital camera was that they would have shot on. But I think it would have added a little bit more of a crisp, not not like the the too crisp look that 4K does that people complain about, but I think it would have just brought it a little bit more into keeping it current with what's going on right now, because that was like the end of yeah end of film end of stock use, and then like digital now has just taken over. So I don't know. It was it was it was good. Uh, it's very very much an independent feel, which I got to give all the Coppola's credit for. Um, they they just appreciate the art of film and they make movies that they want to make regardless of budget on all aspects of it. So I got to give them credit for that. Absolutely. Here's another question for you. Do you think perhaps 
I guess first, is it possible to make that that kind of soft focus um, feel with digital? I'm sure it is. Yeah, I, feel I, like I it's don't know. Probably how... more of a of an artistic choice, you know, like they kind of felt like. <clears throat> Maybe I'm just speculating. I'm, I'm sure I am, but to them, they were kind of like in a in a dream. You know that whole thing. It was just so surreal. They weren't sleeping. Everything was so right. so strange. So I maybe that's kind of how I because I, I noticed it and I appreciate it and I kind of that's how I came away with it. But maybe it was just a technical uh, incapability of the of the film stock. No, I mean. I, I I looked and and Francis Ford, her father, was pushing for digital because it was the future, okay. and she pushed back because he executive produced the movie, which I didn't know until I watched it. Okay. Um, but she pushed for film because it was a rom- more romantic look, and I, I can't argue with that. Um, but what I did notice was, I mean, with with film, <clears throat> similar to if you if you watch an old VHS tape, there are hits that come up on the film from transition, mm-hmm. like little little white specks. The same way as the, if you shot on a camera that had pixels out, that would be the look, sure. except they'd be constant. Um, there were a few moments of that, and there, there was, like you said, there was a soft, very soft focus to it. And I don't know, how, I mean, I, uh, with, with the, they had a $4 million budget. I don't know if they would have been able to contain that had they shot on digital, and that might have played a role, I'm sure. Sure. I don't know. I'm 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 glad that I, I'm glad that I, I lost the bet and did watch it. It was it was very much worth my time. Um, I'm glad you liked it. I I I I am going. I have a couple other of her films on the shelf now. It took me two different used shops to find it, huh. um, but I did find it, and I picked up a couple of other of her her directing films as well to watch now. So, what other congratulations. Mo- <clears throat> what other movies has she done? Yeah, thank you very much. What other movies has she done? Uh, the Bling Ring. Hmm, okay. Which which is uh I think it's about I, I might I might be completely off base here. I think it's about the the Lohan escapades of like robbery hmm. um within her group. Okay. I I'm, hmm. I'm not positive on that. And then um I there's an uh, I can't I can't think offhand. Okay. I was not prepared for your following up on what those titles were. I'm a, I'm a But very... I'll have them ready next podcast. You better. I'm a very inquisitive guy. Be prepared or whatever. Be prepared or drink the commo- I'll, I'll, the a la mode bidet. <laughs> a la mode bidet. Lip yeah. my stocking. <laughs> lip uh, lip I, my I, stocking. Yeah. <laughs> I, lip I, I, my I did stocking. not understand that. And I got to say, I got to say, after a few scenes like that, it made me think maybe I don't want to go to Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Having a prostitute sent to your room, I don't want that. But funny uh, misunderstandings like that, I think I would really enjoy. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, it's been my experience internationally. I have not had prostitutes sent to my room, but I had, I have had a few people that I've been working with ask if I prefer to spend the night alone or not. And I'm always, yeah. I always answer like no, just because I don't know <laughs> if they're gonna be like you and send some crazy person that they find like wandering the street up to my room. So, because I think that's what you do. You'd find like the Taz out there who's ready to, to start a cyclone mm-hmm. up and be like, all right, here you go. Good luck. Make for an interesting evening. Yeah, I'm sure that it would. If if you wanted to end up, you know, I, I, it seemed like his room was 25 stories up. So, I mean, in a situation like that, I, I'd probably end up outside of the window somewhere. I, yeah, I don't. I I think I'd probably just leave the room. Hope she, hopefully she'd leave. Yeah, you can have the bed. I'm gonna go sleep in the <laughs> lobby. No, Mister Bob Harris. No, let me go. Help! <laughs> oh, that scene cracks me up so much. It was good, and, and from what I understand, it's still one of Bill Murray's favorite films that he's ever participated yeah, in. I can understand, but I think he's done very well with the independent feel. I, I, I know that. Like he's he's known for his comedy, but as far as his features go, it seems like he he gets more out of doing the very dramatic, independent feel, where story story driven, um, and it g- kind of gives him a freedom to to express himself in a way that comedy doesn't sometimes. Yeah, yeah, comedy kind of railroads you into a certain uh, 
aspect of yourself you know you don't really get the opportunity for deeper expression of you know you character you're playing you know well he's been obscenely famous now for over 30 years and there's got to be like any job you know at some point you just don't feel like you want to do it anymore yeah of course but if you can find a, an aspect of it where you don't have to be what you're known for and you can just be you know um, um you can you can find those moments to draw from from other other pains or other joys i think that there's a longevity that it, it can add to an actor's career anyway that's absolutely right i would assume it's probably the same way going from dramatic to comedic if you could i mean i'm yeah, if you can make that jump, not an easy one to do. Yeah, that's... I don't. I can't think of any offhand that have done it, but I know that a lot of, a lot of very good comedians are also very, very good dramatic actors yeah. because there's just a lot of pain in making people laugh. Yeah, that's the truth. I think um, Adam Sandler. He doesn't do too many, but if you like uh, Rain Over Me, as well as my, yeah. my personal favorite uh, of his. Dramatic roles, and I can't even think of many more, but uh, Punch Drunk Love, I really think he's... I was going to say, I movies. think he nailed that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that for, in his case, I know he, he makes a lot of films that are, are uh, criticized as not being great, and I won't argue that they are. But for a while there, he did have a really good mathematic equation going. Like He would give the studio and the, the, the public what they wanted with a, a, a stupid, funny film that would make a lot of money at the box office. Mm-hmm. And then he would come back two films later with one that he wanted to do, whether it's Punch, Drunk, Love, Rain Over Me, or Spanglish, like films that he w- wanted to be a part of. And they didn't always have a great welcoming at the box. But now it seems like he's he's just lost the battle where he'll do yeah. the movies that he wants to make. He's, and i got to give him credit, even though he's not always making, you know, and, and that's never been his role is to make Oscar winners. But he is keeping every single one of his friends employed. Mm-hmm. So, uh, he's he is uh, loyal to a fault, and I I can't criticize him on that front. I guess no, that's. I'm getting a phone call. I think it's from Germany. Should we have him on? <laughs> Maybe, Maybe, Maybe next time. time. I just yeah. got one from Chicago. <laughs> uh, but I think that we should try to try to conference call someone yeah. in sometime randomly. Yeah, we, we Welcome to the should. podcast. You are live, <laughs> and then you can find out how many credit caller people are actually after me. <laughs> Beautiful. It's beautiful. Beautiful. You know who else is pretty good being dr- uh, dramatic when they were a comedian one time? Uh, I'm going to go with Robin Williams. Yeah, he's pretty good, but that's not who I was going to say. Then I don't know their real name. That's that's literally the only name I have rattling around in my brain right now. I think his name is James Carey. <laughs> okay. I would not have guessed that. Isn't uh, Jim short for James? Jim Carrey? Yes. Yep. Did Did you know that's the joke I was making? No. Oh, okay. I yeah, yeah Jim, Jim Carrey, I think, on his few yeah. dramatic roles, he's pretty good. Uh, I didn't mean to get away from Robin Williams, though. He is indeed. Um, Jack. Jack had some poignant moments in it. I'm sure there's better ones. Uh, Awakenings? That one's really... That was that was a hard yeah, movie yeah, to watch. That's a brutal one, for sure. Yeah, but I think that that he, with his willingness to work, because it's different now. Independent film is different than than it was in the in the nineties and early two thousands because everybody now can make a film. Whereas up until uh, Lost in Translation, uh, that was not the case. And Robin Williams, by doing Goodwill Hunting, launched the careers of Matt Damon and, and Ben Affleck with an incredible story that I don't think that they would have had the performances that they did if Robin hadn't been a part of it. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I wonder so. if many people would have seen Good Will Hunting had Robin not been in it. You know, you'd think maybe, but I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, w- without that draw, I, I don't think it would have been a film that people picked up. And there is another film that Robin was in that has certainly affected your life. <laughs> oh, and that is hook. That is hook. Nailed the transition. Nailed the transition. That's a transition right there, buddy. <laughs> I was thinking about it too. I wasn't sure how I was going to work it in, but <sighs> I know already our audience has been waiting unabashedly 
unabashedly for chapter two, chapter two of the Rufio story. The Lost Boy Scouts, chapter two, electric. The Lost Boy Scouts, chapter two, electric boogaloo. <sighs> Clear my throat. <clears throat> Do we need to give any backstory to it? Do I have any? No. I, okay. For uh, first time listeners, um... for first time listeners, you should go back and listen to podcast one. Because this is going down a rabbit hole that you want to be a part of from the beginning. He's right. Anyways, uh, I'm, I'm writing a very... Uh, you know, I don't know how long it'll be, but I'm writing a novella called, entitled The Lost Boy Scouts. Um, featuring Rufio predominantly. Um, last week we read chapter one. And tonight, today it is Lost Boy Scouts. Chapter two. Electric Boogaloo. Zeke, are you ready? Put me to sleep, baby. Me, 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 me. How do I sound? Oh, glorious. <sighs> okay, let's see if I can get through this. Ready? Set. Go. Rufio was attempting to, <laughs> to knock on his prospective buyer's house, but he kept running into it with his raging boner before his hand could reach the door. It would seem cockfighting had got him so fucking hard it almost hurt. He was about to go in for another cock knock, but the door opened suddenly. An ugly pirate stood in front of him. Rufio's boner deflated in a hurry. In fact, it did a deflating little a little deflating balloon number. No joke, it detached, came out of his pants, and flew around the immediate area erratically. Heck, it even made that sort of low pitched flapping blubbering noise, you know, like before falling back in his pants. If this had been in a movie or cartoon, you would have really laughed. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you about... But Rufio's pecker did he even did a perfect circle around the pirate's head and then sort of floated in front of his face for a couple of seconds, too. Rufio gulped. Oh, uh, uh, hi, mister. Care to b- 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 buy some, s- 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 some p- 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 popcorn? It's f- 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 for a g- 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 good cause. Rufio was scared shitless. He was scared dickless. Rufio was so scared he was stuttering like a little bitch. Oi, what's all this and I? The pirate asked. Asked? His accent, thick with the speech of a really stupid, really stupid smelly island where they probably drink way too much gross fucking gin and eat crumpets and don't understand them. They probably don't understand cricket even. They invented them both. Still don't understand it. So, 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 so sorry, mister. I had a raging b- 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 boner from fighting your guard. C- 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 cock. <sighs> then I s- saw your ugly m- m- mug in my p- p- packer instanta- instantaneously deflated and f- f- flew around like a b- 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 balloon. Rufio, the little bitch, snammered. Bollocks to that. I'd be willing to bet you got some little fairy tucked away in your britches, what you used to get your little trolleys. The cretinous pirate responded. It would seem the pirate was correct. Rufio's pecker was, in fact, Tinkerbell dressed up in a penis suit with a gag in her mouth preventing her from proper speech, hence the flapping balloon noise. What can I say? Tink was into some kinky shit, man. And if you got so fairy, and you was able to put the nicks on me guard cock, and you must be a lost boy scout and me sworn enemy, the pirate who sounded like he had shit in his mouth exclaimed. Why, if I didn't have a confusing crumpet to eat and equally confusing cricket match to watch, I'd have half a mind to give you a fairly severe scolding, he added. Well, I guess Tink had had enough, because she flew out of Rufio's pants, still in her penis costume. <laughs> but minus the gang. Hey, you big pirate bitch! We murdered your stupid fucking chicken. It died like a sniveling fucking worm, the fairy yelled. The pirate's eyes narrowed, and a sneer creeped across his face. I'm mad about this now. I'm not sure why I wasn't before, he said. It must be because you're more chicken shit than you, your chicken's shit, you big fucking biatch! Tink taunted. I am the owner of Elia Martel. You raped her. You murdered her. You killed her children, the pissed off pirate said angrily. His accent switched to some vague Spanish. Or maybe Portuguese affectation for some reason. Say it! You raped her! You murdered her! You killed her children! The pirate repeated. I ain't saying shit, you big dumb dick licker! Tink responded. 
Well, shit got pretty real pretty fast at this point. The pirate and Tink in her dick suit had quite the little spat. It was really violent and cool. Like, really cool. I wish I could tell you about it, but what the fuck have you done for me lately? Nothing. That's what. I will tell you this, though. The pirate was kicking Tink's tiny tookus. He kept yelling, Say it! You raped her! You murdered her! You killed her children! I guess he sounds Jamaican, too. Anyways, at the very end, Tink... The pirate had Tink pinned down with his thumb. It looked like the end for her, but... Alas, she had told death, not today. She summoned all of her strength, broke free of the thumb, flew behind the crouched pirate real quick-like, and screamed, I raped her! She then shot up the pirate's ass and continued in a muffled voice, I murdered her! She flew out the pirate's left eyeball, now covered in shit and gore, and looked the pirate in his good eye and finished, I killed her children! Oddly, the pirate smiled and said in his original accent, Oi, I finally understand cricket and crumpet. Then he died. And that's the end of chapter two, Electric Boogaloo. I gotta give it credit, you managed to combine two of my favorite film franchises, so <clears throat> good on you, sir. You know, when I'm writing them, it seems kind of funny, and then I read them, and I think, boy, could use some work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I appreciate it, and it's also, uh, you know, a good testament to both of our podcast abilities. Yeah. So I, I think that we, we keep moving forward. We trudge on. We trudge on. I mean, we're we're just we know, we know the best. We're the best at podcasting. We know everything about podcasting. Uh, we know everything about podcasting. Our podcast was almost called the world's first podcast. That's true. So I don't know what else people need to know. Probably like social security number in case they're trying to get a job. They might want to know that. Yeah, I mean that and our pin number for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mine is yeah. uh, well. We we can give that to him later. Oh, okay, later later time. Okay. We yeah we we've we've gone past our our deadline on this this, oh, this we episode. We have, haven't we? Two oh, boys, one gosh. podcast. Sorry, folks. I guess my. I, I think it was worthwhile. The extended version to hear chapter two was well worth their very, time. Very good, thank you, sir. Well, everybody, that's all we have. That's all I have for you today. That's all I have for you today too. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. The portions of today's broadcast that you actually enjoyed are brought to you in whole by psst, you and the skinny jeans. Loud and proud with that moose knuckle is not a good look on you. If only you hadn't been told by that 20-something sales pimp that they made your butt look great. Stop mangling, you dangle. There's hope for your sorry ass, crushed testes, and whatever other vague genitalia you have but still call yourself a man. Slide balls deep into freshness with the new tripod pant for men that know better. Brought to you by Denmo Jeans. Breathe easy. Hang free.